Okay, I've got some um, uh, sound here, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Uh, this is uh, Monday, April the 16th, and as I had pretty much led you to believe and told you, we are now in that part of the, of the, of the course where, and this certainly as all the course materials indicated, we are in that portion of the course where you are going to be working on projects and then you will be working on um, your final exams. And as I mentioned last week, this is the part of the course where I see if you were diligent in terms of paying attention to the cases that we did, I can see that usually in the hands-on, uh, your responses to the hands-on assignments, because in the hands-on assignments, like I did in exam two, I include uh, 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 something that has you do uh, a skill or use, a, use an Excel function that we would covered in a case. So I think it shouldn't be a surprise to you uh, in, in, that, in that I have that, uh, I, I include those because I don't just do the cases so you can get points or I can have something to talk about. I do that so I, you will have some experience. Most of this, there, there's no way I could teach you to memorize all the key changes, uh, the, the keystrokes. And as you've seen, uh, as I've gone through these cases, you'll see things from you know a year back to how I sa saved, uh, worked on a case. I took some different approaches, different uh, did some different things, and that was a lot a lot of that in terms of working with the databases. So again, this session is is one of these as as I'm in here kind of talking about the projects to give you some reminders again of what we've got ahead of us. And uh, let me get the internal here, okay? And I've got uh, so I have it on the board now. It, right now, today, it's it's primarily me, and of course, I've told you uh, we're in the project mode. So I want to go through again and uh, just do some of that housekeeping, or so we know where we are in terms of of the cases. Now, let me say this: many of you uh, had problems with the hands-on part of the of, of exam two and there's a reason it's because you may not have been really paying sufficient attention when I did the cases I did the uh, those Excel cases and those access cases I said over and over and over you need to have your book open while we do this you may need to make notes uh, I would I would tell them you know here I'll show you here's how I did it okay and I would show you here's the file to upload and my assumption is you wouldn't just upload it to uh, get the credit, you'd upload it and then keep it and take a look at it. And see, some of these things where I'm doing some coaching, I'm, I'm concerned that this is a maturation issue. And that is, you may not be following through like you should. Well, that being said, as I've, I've, said, you know, as I've said many, many times, this is a very difficult course. It's an easy course to make a good grade in if you, if you want to just do so, but it's a hard course to really get everything out of it that there is here. We've covered a lot of ground, a lot of material, uh, and at this point now, having had this course where we looked at some, some uh, uh, common, uh, what I would call common or ordinary business problems, and how to analyze them, to look at them and understand them, and then as we've gone through the database courses, you now have as much or more experience working with the database than probably 95% of the people you'll ever work with or for. But that's okay because database technology is what, it, is, what is now driving business growth and opportunity. It's, uh, it, it, the technology is transforming how we do everything from uh, making things or manufacturing things to getting them to people, uh, that is you know, the supply chain and how we market. And as you've been, and of course you're aware of social media, their impact, which are driven by databases. Your phone is a database. It just simply, the, the, your phone is a database and those icons on the front of your phone, okay, 
are really nothing more than a form. And then you click and it runs a query and it calls up that program. And once you start to understand that, then you see, oh, okay, here's, here's a business model, right? Angie's List uses a database as a model. Um, there, there are these other sites where you can you know, buy stuff online or eBay, which is an auction site. Okay. These are ways that we, that we, that we overcome some of the problems of what's known as a, a lack of a symmetry of information. In other words, there's, there's a party out there searching for someone they can't find them to sell anything to. And there's a party out there looking for something and they can't find someone to buy it from. So this is, this is essentially how databases have changed things, plus our ability to take data to store it, to retrieve it, and then to put it into uh, uh, a tool like Excel and analyze it. I make no apologies about this. This is the business world. This is the world in which you will compete. And you'll either understand that and learn how we compete on analytics and become comfortable with that, or I'm not sure where, what will, where you will go or what you will do. I, 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 and this is from the smallest of businesses all the way up to the largest of businesses. Well, that all being said, we'll scroll down here and of course, uh, we'll look and take a, we'll take a look at this week. And today is, of course, the 16th. We're at week 11, and we've done uh, we've done Truman University. You uploaded that. That was an XLS case, so that should be there and done as well as Pacific Trading. So now you have some flex time to work on the projects that are coming up. Now I also have a link for you over to Teradata University. Okay. Okay, and you'll want to log in over there as well, or just go to go over to Teradata, Teradata University. Okay, now you'll notice I you didn't see it because I I had uh, I had exited that because that's for for my own personal access where I can log in and see. But Teradata University Network has an enormous set of resources uh, for you to take a look at. Um, everything from all of the database types of, 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 of products that are out there, um, products that are hybrid products like, like uh, Tableau, which tries to combine Excel and Access. So there's some good resources. Now, as I mentioned before, next week there's no class. There's a fle it's, it's flex time, but there are, there are classes this week because what I'm going to do today and then what I'll do on Wednesday is I'm going to talk about, okay, what you've got coming up. So those are the, the access cases. Those should be uploaded, okay? Here's another, no meaning. This doesn't mean you don't have anything to do. Let me close the door for a second. What this means is you have work to do, okay? You have work to do, and it's in the form of projects and your final exam, all right? So let's talk about this Excel paper, okay? Excel as function paper, all right? Now I'll tell you, see the syllabus uh, for details. Disregard random call presentations. The only requirement is the paper. Now, when I say a paper, and I'm going to repeat this again, okay, I'm talking about about three, maybe four pages, where you uh, tell me about an Excel function that you selected, okay, why you selected it, how it works and provide me some documentation showing me that you know how it works, okay? Where a lot of people messed up on the hands-on on exam two is you showed, me, uh, uh, you, you showed me a screenshot of Excel, but there was nothing in the formula bar. So there was no way for me to know, okay? And I asked you to show me the formulas so I could see how you, 
how you arrived at that conclusion. I have no other way to know that. Now, some of you uh, did a screenshot and then you provide an Excel file. When you did that, you got credit because I went and checked to see if it worked. So let's go back up here for a moment and we're going to go to the files section. Okay. We're going to look at the files section and um, I'm going to put uh, uh, the function paper. Well, let's see what we get. I didn't spell function correctly. Here we are. Here's the rubric. You say, oh, there's a rubric. Yes, there is. Now, okay, uh, here are the criteria. Okay, now I give you a written report. You know, um, you know a minimum, I think, of three pages, uh, double space, all this business. If you give me, a, if you give me, I like pictures, so <laughs> show me a lot show me how the how you how, how the function is used literally so i can see it okay you could do that by by embedding a, a screenshot in in word you could do that by providing an excel file with text file that explains it so this rubric is is helpful to you okay i don't necessarily need or want to cover page if you do that that's fine but I'm interested in making sure that one, you tell me why you chose what you did, okay? Number two, that you explain how that function works. And number three, provide me some documentation. In other words, some references. And make sure that they're in APA format. And, and, and this is, so I'm not, I, I used to require a very formal paper. I don't anymore, okay? But if you want to see in general what I'm after, that's what I'm after. About three or four pages that, that you, again, you tell me why you chose that function, how it works, and how it could be applied in business. And that's what I'm after. Okay? Some of you, I've also told some of you, you could, if you wish, do a PowerPoint. Okay? Uh, if you wanted to embed stuff in there. All right? I'll say this also, I would even go so far, if, you've, if you can record something and upload it to, to YouTube, I'd be even willing to look and see, you could do a YouTube presentation for me if you chose to. If, if, you, if you have a Google account uh, and, and you can record, if you can record a video and put it up at YouTube, fine, it's gonna have to work though, okay? Otherwise, I'm good with, with PowerPoint, all right? So that should tell you pretty much what I'm after. Again, not a formal paper as I've said that over and over and over. I will not be asking people to do random presentations. I don't do that anymore. But I want to see, uh, you know, again, why you chose that function, how it works, okay? How we apply it and use it in business and then documentation, okay? I wanna feel confident after I look at what you've uploaded that you know how that function works, works and what it's all about, okay? Which I think is fair enough. So I, I think I've done about all I can in terms of, of telling you. Uh, you know, and let me say this also, it is okay for you to use a function that we used in one of these case studies. So if you're kind of stumped, uh, well, you know, go back and see what we did and, you know, in case number six or number 10 or whatever, and I'm fine with that, okay? Now, let's go on back over here. I'll close that off. Get that out. We'll clear that and we'll go back to the modules. All right, so we've got that one coming up. Now, when is it due? Well, let's go down here and look and see. 
All right. The again, today's the sixteenth. The XLS uh, paper, function paper, or you know, you know the papers, you know, not not a formal paper, it, it is due on May the tenth. Okay, it's seventy-five points. I realize if you go in the rubric, it shows eighty. It's seventy-five. Okay, and as I mentioned here, the only requirement is paper presentations, not necessary. Now, on May the 10th, you also have the spatial analysis exercise. Now you've done access case five and six, and those should be uploaded by now because we've, we, we've done them all. We've done all six access cases. They should be uploaded, okay? And so now we need to find out, all right, what is it you want? So let's click on here. I says, see instructions. You know, he said, Dr. Harmon, why do you do that? I do it for a simple reason. So you will learn your way around Canvas. Now, I, I admittedly, some in, I may be one of the few instructors in, uh, over here, at least in business, who use Canvas as heavily as I do. And there's all, this, all these files and the modules and all that. In other words, it is our classroom. There are others who may just use it to do tests. I don't, but I, but I want you to feel comfortable navigating here. And there's also a simple reason. When you go to work for somebody, they're gonna have a company website and they're going to expect you to become uh, um, comfortable navigating through their website. So it's best to just go ahead and get, uh, get with it, get, get with the program. Well, let's go to our familiar place. Of, and it's 45 points. It's due uh, May, the, May the 10th at 5 p.m. Let's go to the files. And the spatial. And here's the spatial analysis exercise. And here's the document. And as you see, all right, you're going to go to the, the website for a, a restaurant. Or, or, or a cafe there in Oklahoma City, okay? And, uh, and, and notice on each one of these, I ask you to give me a print screen, okay, that shows me you completed the task, then task number two, Esri zip code lookup. We've talked about Esri tapestry, and they have a zip code lookup, you're gonna have to do that. Then Google Maps. And, uh, and, and then uh, depict their location with a Google Street Map layer. Okay, and then Google Earth layer. And then uh, identify the top Esri tapestry segment. Provide a print screen that provides evidence. So you're looking at this retail staff. You say, why are we doing this? You're learning how to use open source or free and easily available tools, mapping tools, to conduct a spatial analysis. We're gonna locate the place, okay? We're gonna apply some layers. See, mapping is online, is just like a database, okay? When we talk about layers, you're just basically doing some kind of, you're, you're basically running a query, okay? And when you locate it, you're just basically locating a data point. And so uh, spatial analysis, ge geospatial analysis is based, is really a database where we've got a, a, a base or a layer map and we build on it or we drill down to it, okay? And so you can see uh, the, 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 the segment for that, for that store. Why? Because these are in marketing segments. If you're a marketing student, you're going to be cued into this, okay? Because you're, this is a fantastic tool to find out, am I in an area where the, where the, where the zip code, am I in a zip code where the, the people who live there fit the profile of my customer? And I ask you to do median household income, then regards age and population density. 
okay? And uh, demographic data. Then uh, use Google Maps to find other in restaurants. In other words, who are their competitors? And then use a Zoom show slider to zoom out so you can see their location in relation to I-40 and the John Kilpatrick Turnpike. You're gonna back it out, okay? And so you can see how it fits within the larger Oklahoma City area. You do this all the time with your maps. You're just not really conscious of it or thinking about it, okay? But what we're doing here is we're analyzing this location, okay? And then uh, I ask you to go ahead and uh, Google Maps layer for step 13, and then the Google Earth layer for step 14. And again, each time to provide, provide a uh, print screen, uh, have a print screen that provides evidence. So this is something you, you, you should start on. It's not that hard to do, okay? And I think, it, hopefully, especially if you're a marketing student, this is gonna get your attention because you'll go, oh, I can use these tools to figure out uh, where, uh, to, to analyze a, a location. And if I can do that, I might be able to use this tool to figure out where, where to locate uh, a place or to identify all of my competitors, okay? So uh, th that's, again, here's one of these tools. It's free, it's easily accessible. Now let me say this, Esri offers all kinds of MOOCs. Those are massively open online courses, meaning they're free and they're available to anybody. And I take all, as many of them as I can get uh, that tell you, show you about how to use their products like the uh, uh, using location, they have, a, they have a MOOC out there called Location Advantage. They have one on cartography, that is how do I build maps. They have all kinds of resources for you. And we're seeing a real a, a revolution in the use of geospatial data, okay? And to see, and, and, and again, without database technology, this would not be possible. It just wouldn't be. But because we have database technology, we have satellite imaging, et cetera, uh, think about it next time, okay, that you go down, think about the next time that you, uh, that you use Google Street View. Now, it's easy for you and me to go down there, and, and often if you use a Street View, you'll see the car, a little Google car with a little camera on top. And what's happening is that that car is, is taking a 360 degree picture, okay, a, everything around it. And as that vehicle's moving, okay, and so it gets it, pardon me for saying okay so much, it drives me nuts when I do that. Then you'll, you'll have, uh, that'll be stored in a database. All right. Let me show you real quickly. And I want to go to maps. And I'm going to put in an address here. And this would be 500 West University, Shawnee. And you know where I'm going with this. Okay. 74. Eight oh four. Right there we are. Good old Bailey. There's the Geiger Center. There's George Bailey Business Center. That's a joke. And here we here here we have uh, some directions. And I can here's a little icon where I can play and and uh, view this browse this, and do the street images. I'll turn that off and I can zoom out to get that perspective. I can zoom in. Now I can also go, this is the map. And remember, this is, this is a, what I'm doing here is this is a form. Just like we've learned with forms and what we're going to, and what we're doing with this form is we're exploring this area and we're choosing an icon. See, this is the this is the thing that's so amazing is you 
you don't have to pour over a paper and pencil, a paper map. This, you've got this. So I, I can go to the satellite view. And there's the terrain. There's Geiger Center. And I'm, I'm going to come back on in. And of course, as you see, there's West. And we're going to come into Bailey Business Center. Of course, there's Bailey. And there's Ford Hall. And here we are on campus. Now, even 15 years ago, if I had said to our enrollment management people, I have a tool that allows a student to look around campus without ever having come here, that said, no way. Here it is. I wonder how many of you used this tool to take a look at prospective schools. And I can come back here and we'll and we'll get a sense of how old this is. We're gonna go down West University. And of course we'll go past Stebblefield. Now years ago, when I was a student, we, we might get a brochure that had a couple of pictures, but that was about it. And of course, you can tell we're headed west, and we're going to go by. Uh, uh, we're going to go by uh, Rayleigh Chapel and some more university housing. And of course, coming on the Geiger Center, this is absolutely totally remarkable, and this is not possible if you don't have sophisticated database systems with servers that can pop this up immediately and retrieve these images for us. And, and what it looks like to me is it's, it's on a couple of different days. You can see that from the scholar, but you know, the places are the places. And here we go. So I, I can really do some significant ana analysis. I can look around the place, get a feeling of what it looks like. Apparently they've had a storm or some rain. And we'll back it on out. Of course, you, 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 and you've probably done this. And then we can get the panoramic view This is an incredible tool for a marketer who wants to get a sense of what a location looks like from the, from the street view. Plus, I can go over to, to Esri Tapestry and I can take a look at the zip code and start to get all kinds of data and demographics. And these are free and easily available. As I mentioned before, there are training programs out there for you. And if you're a marketing student, and you don't take advantage of some of these massively open, uh, these free courses that Esri offers, you're really missing the boat because there are enormous, enormous opportunities in, in this. Think of how, how this is used by people who are in the supply chain and logistics. And I know there's probably a large number of you who are going, oh, I've done this before when I put in the directions in my phone to get me to Oklahoma City or directions to go somewhere else. Yep, there you go. Okay, so again, that's why I'm doing, why I'm giving you that. Now, let's go ahead and I'm gonna close this off. And we'll come back over here to the files. And so we've, I, those, that's the spatial analysis exercise. Again, I'll ask you to, uh, to, uh, to, to verify your work. And by the way, folks, if I say screenshot, I, I usually mean print screen. Okay, so I don't mean that you take a photo. <laughs> I don't mean that you do the work on the computer and then take a photo, take a picture of what's on the screen. I mean a print, I mean a print screen. 
I apologize about it, the fuzziness of my language there. Let's go down to the modules. We've got that coming up. And, I'm, and uh, we're gonna have a control F and I'll go week uh, um, 12. That'll get us down there pretty fast. There's week 12. And no, no meeting, no, no class meeting. This is flex time. And so you said, you're, you're kind of scaring me, Dr. Harmon, because you're, this makes it sound like I'm, given, I'm being given quite a bit of time here to do a really good job with this. Yep, I am. If you choose to mess around and do your work at the last minute after I give you this, then that's a message for you that you may not have matured to the point yet that you need to be. As I've said before, and you'll hear it from me again, this course is about helping you grow up as much as it is about giving you some skills. Because I'll give you a task and say, here's when it's due and leave you be. If I have to beat you into submission by making you come to class every week and all that to learn, if I can't give you an assignment and say, here it is, it's due in three weeks, at this point in time, you really do need to rethink um, what it means to be a, you know, a person of your age, because at this point, you're adults. You folks can get married. Uh, you can buy a house. You can buy a car. You can go enroll. You can enlist in the military and go fight and die for your country. Uh, you can sign contracts. So at this point, the growing up part says, hey, I make the use of my time. Now, again, here's the spatial analysis exercise. We talked about that. I've talked about the uh, the function paper. Now it's at this point it's 2:23, and I think I probably started uh, I don't know maybe a little about five till or maybe ten till. So I've been going at this for 30 minutes. So if you say, "Oh, I don't understand," so and so, trust me, I've given you written instructions. I've given you I've given you instructions here in in this in this in this screencast. And there are going to be some other uh, other uh, other assignments where I have screencasts for you. I can't do any more than that. I won't do any more than that because that's all the information you're going to get when you go out in the world. Okay, so I try to provide. Um, there I am. I apologize. I'm going to have to start finding myself fifty cents every time I say okay. I want to simulate for you what it's like to be out in the real world to have to be self-motivated, to have to be able to meet a deadline, to have to be able to, to manage your time and your resources. Now, we've done the spatial analysis exercise and, and the database cases five and six, we've done those. And then we come into finals week. Wow, are you serious? Yep, we're not that far away from finals week. There's a week there, week 13, I give you more flex time. So we come to finals week, all right? And here it is, here's the finals, uh, the OB schedule for finals. Let's take a look at that. And uh, we are going to be BISS 1123B, and here it is, our final exam for this course, this section. It, uh, a business of uh, business problem analysis BPA is eight o'clock to ten o'clock a.m. Wednesday the sixteenth. Now I'm going to tell you this. All right, if you want to take three quizzes at eight o'clock in the morning and try to get them all done by ten o'clock, be my guest. When ten o'clock comes, the course is over. So if I were you, I'd work ahead on those quizzes open book, open note, and I'd try to get them done. Because I think there are three quizzes and they're all due at the end. Now, where will I be? Chances are I'm probably going to be in my office in, uh, I, chances are I'll be in Oklahoma City, my office over there, because this is the only final I have for that day. And, or I may be over here, I'm not sure. But I will be available uh, but but I will I will be online during that time. Now let me say this: 
I have repeated this over and over and over. If you decide to go somewhere off campus and you have technolo techno technology issues, you're out of luck. These labs are over here. They're open till nine or 10 o'clock at night and here at Bailey. And you have no excuse to come over here and not take the exams. If you don't have Excel or access on your computer, don't cry to me because you've got these labs and they're available till nine, nine or 10 o'clock at night. They're available during the, our class time if you want to come in and work. So all I could say is don't try to squeeze all that in. Uh, and I'll be online, but if you tell me, oh, Dr. Herman, I was out here at so-and-so and my computer went down, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. If you're in the, if you're in the OVU system and, you, and something happens, that's different. And let's make sure you understand, with assignments that you upload, you can upload them before you submit them. In other words, you can upload a draft. I suggest you do that because once it's submitted, it is submitted. The exams are timed. They're open book through open note. And if you, if you believe that you'll be able just to walk in cold and open your book and look them all up, I'm sorry, it won't work like that. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you that right now. Okay, so we've talked about your, uh, your final exam. And let's go back over here to the modules. And we're here in finals week. And so you know when the final will be. And then uh, we go to final exam part one. I'm gonna open this up. And this is due at the beginning of the final exam period. Which is 8 a.m. the 16th. So it's due at the beginning of the final exam period. Let me walk through it. Uh, the, the, the course Canvas room and the course supplemental website have a CSV file that contains data scraped from some, an iTunes app, tour, app store. And there's the name of the file and the number of records. Now, I have a link there that can tell you how to become familiar with the app and helps you put the customer reviews into context, blah, blah, blah. There is a PowerPoint I have over there uh, that tells you about the app. And it's, a, it's at the course supplemental website. And you say, where is that? The course supplemental website, the link to it is up there in that big welcome module. Now, that PowerPoint, as I said, is gonna give you uh, a quick intro to how we can perform what we call sentiment analysis. Now, you're gonna create an access database. Oh, yep, you're gonna create an access database. We've, we've been working with databases. Uh, creating a database should not be a problem. And you're gonna name it. And, and there, you know, whatever your, your first name, your last name, final part one. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna open the comma separated file. That's the Excel file, comma, the CSV file. And you're gonna convert it, you're going to convert it to Excel. So you're gonna take a CSV, it's a comma separated uh, uh, file. Okay, and you're going. I said, okay, again, I hate that. And you're going to convert it to, uh, to an Excel file. Then you're going to take the Excel file and import it into your database. We've been imports and exports. That's why it helps to be watching these to see how it, what, what we've done. And you're going to find your solvent textbook. We'll also show you some about that. And you'll find stuff out on the internet as well on how to do imports and exports. After the import to the file, you're gonna to need to do some changes. There are gonna be some properties. There are gonna be some things, for example, um, where you'll need to take data that is saved as text and make it a number. 
and then I have you create a report, which means you're going to have to run some, a query. And I tell you exactly what I'm after. Then I ask you to do another report. So you have to run another query. Then uh, another report. And the query gets a little more complicated. Now, You'll be able to work. You'll be able to work with these at the, at the graphic user interface, i.e., the design level and access. We've been working in there over six cases. If you've been paying attention, this should not be a scary proposition. And then here's another report. Step eleven. Step twelve. Step thirteen. Step fourteen. So you're going to need to open your Microsoft Excel file that you that you used uh, and uh, create a new worksheet and name that worksheet Task 13 and depict the rating per version by quarter for April, for April, May, and June. And then when you've completed all the tasks, upload your access file and your Excel file at Canvas. I mean Canvas, not Moodle. We're not working in Moodle, I know. It's Canvas, okay? There's some, other, there's some of these little edits I need to get, get in and get done, but we're talking about upload them at Canvas. And that's part one of the final. And as you would guess, that's the hands-on part. Then we'll go down here to final exam part two. And I have a place for you to, to upload your access file, a place for you to upload your Excel file. In part two, that's a quiz. It generally reviews concepts covered in exam one and two. You get two attempts, 40 minutes. You have 25 items. There it is, you have two attempts. Let's go take a look at exam, uh, final exam part three. This covers Microsoft Excel cases. You see, we had these cases and we had to solve a textbook. And every single time I would say, you ought to have your textbook with you. And early on the course when many of you would come in here, uh, I'd say that and I'd see no textbooks open. Well, uh, the, 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 uh, the birds have come home to roost, my friends. If you've not been following along in that textbook, a lot of this is going to be tough for you. Others, it will not. And uh, you're going to get two attempts, 40 minute time limit, you have 40 items. 40 items, a 40 minute time li limit, two attempts, which means you get two shots at this within a 40 minute time limit. If you do, and don't, don't bullet, and let me understand this also. This is not a situation where you can do part of it and then come back and finish it. It doesn't work like that. These exams, you start and you stop. So if you send me an email and go, well, I thought it would save it. I'm sorry, I've said it here. It's on a recording. Once you start that exam, work through the whole thing and submit it. Then you can try it a second time. The highest grade will get reported, but you've got 40 minutes to deal with 40 items. We'll come down to final exam part four. This is also due uh, no later than 10 a.m. This is 30 points. As you guessed, it's 40 minutes. You get two attempts. And that, my friends, is, is what you have ahead of you. You see, Dr. Harmon, is it possible for me to do all of this ahead of time 
and be done with it and focus on some other courses? Absolutely. I have no problem with that whatsoever. That's why I've structured it like this. That's why I've created it. So you have that flexibility. You'll either use that flexibility to your advantage or you won't. That'll be up to you. Okay, well, it's 2.37, and as I mentioned, I'll be on here and I'll stay, uh, but primarily more like uh, just here uh, as, a, uh, as some virtual office hours. So I'm going to stay here for the recording. And I've been here on here, say, 48 minutes. I've gone through everything that, that you've got to do. Uh, I will probably on Wednesday do the same thing. Just repeat um, these instructions so you'll have no way to go, well, nobody ever told me. Yes, I told you probably 15 times by this point. Okay. I probably will just wrap up. I'm, I'm, I think what I'm going to do here uh, is wrap this up. If you have a question, you can certainly send me an email. I want to, and I want to end it with one thing. Throughout the semester, I've offered virtual office hours. I've not had the kind of response I thought I would get. And it, it makes me wonder. So I'm trying to figure out, all right, if I make these virtual office hours available to you, and you don't take advantage of them as much as you could. I guess for me, the, the question is, is why would you not? And maybe your questions are answered. I, you know, I don't know. I get emails from people uh, and, and that's fine. Now, it's Monday and right now it's about, oh, I don't know, it, um, it's 2.39. So I've been on here for now for about eh, 45 minutes maybe and I've gone through all the material. I'm here in BBC Lab, and uh, what I'm going to do is, is, uh, is close this off, and I will be in my office over at Bailey Business Center. I'm here at Bailey. I will be back over at my office. Uh, I'll be this recording. I'll mean to shut it off and record it and, and then po post it and I'll be in my office. Uh, on Thursday, it'll be the same story. I'll be over here in, in, in Shawnee. And I'll have some, uh, I'll have some, um, I'll have some virtual office hours Tuesday and Wednesday. And we'll go from there. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm tired of that. I'm, so I'll have, we'll have the, those hours. By okay, I mean, I hope you understand. If you have questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm, I'm very happy to try to help out. Folks, I'm gonna shut it off now, and I hope you'll get to work on these projects that you have and the final exams that you have, and you'll take advantage of this opportunity to uh, get ahead and maybe get this course, all this work done, so you can focus on some other courses that might be a little bit more uh, tough on you. And I will talk with all of you on Wednesday. God bless you and have a good one.